Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Lions.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are looking at a nine-game slate here, Nate, on a Wednesday night. In this one, we're taking a look at Dallas. They're playing host to the Hawks. Finally, have Clint Capella back. Uh, Take a look at that one. Also got another game video up for you and our player props. So make sure to like and subscribe to that page. can continue to follow along with us. Also want to let you know we have a bonus episode. We like to do our futures episodes around this point in the season as well before we get to All-Star break. Take a look at the status of those awards. We have a special guest joining us to do that. Mark Medina from NBA.com will be here. He just wrote a great article after surveying 30 different media members about what they think will happen the rest of this season. We want to compare what that will look like uh, to those futures markets and maybe even see if he has any inside info on uh, what the voters are thinking since he knows all of those people uh, and they impact all these futures markets for these awards or at least most of them so we will take a look at all that if you want to follow along you have to like and subscribe so you can continue to get those videos also head to the lines.com we'll put everything up there that we're talking about here and uh, you can use our odd finder tool that is what we have so you can make sure you're getting the best juice back on all those bets you're making this season nate let's go ahead and get into this nine game slate and then talk about our game the hawks and the mavs yeah and the hawks are plus two and a half at dallas the totals at 234 there also, one of the early games, Knicks are minus six and a half at home against the Wizards. Uh, then you have Hornets minus two and a half at Rockets. Pacers plus four at Thunder. Halliburton still out for them. The other game we break down, Cavs are plus seven at Memphis. The total's been bet up six points to 228. Break down some angles in that game video. Miami's minus three at the Pelicans. Still no Zion. The Clippers are on a back-to-back. They're plus five and a half at Utah. Nuggets on a back-to-back are minus eight at home against Minnesota. And then the Kings minus four at the Lakers with a 246 total. Those teams uh, did total 270 last time they met. Uh, LeBron is questionable but expected to play. Um, So Dallas lost four of their last five uh, all on the road, including – Two back-to-back in Portland where they they really just folded. Uh, Luca dealing with some ankle soreness and wasn't really himself in that first game. Took an early seat, and then they just sat him on the second night of the back-to-back. So right away, you can kind of throw those aside as like the, an anomaly in terms of they gave up at least 17 threes in both games. They just they didn't have their offense. And they might be having some guys back here as they start this homestand. Uh Dorian Finney-Smith and Josh Green are questionable to return. Uh, Still no Kleba, and and Hardaway Jr. might be out. But they're just so much better at home. First and foremost, I mean, 16-6 and straight up, 16-4 and as favorites versus 1-9 and as road dogs. Um, And they score a little bit more at home. Actually hit fewer threes, though. And their defense is eight points better per 100 possessions. So... Right away at 234, I'm glad I haven't seen much movement on that because I'm I'm all aboard the under there. Atlanta's actually number one in defensive efficiency in their last three. Take that with a grain of salt with their competition, but number one in three-point defense. And they've both been a, you know, at times a top five, top ten, three-point D team this year and the worst offensively three-point shooting team. So... That's generally going to help you go under when you don't have a barrage of threes here. Um, And the pace Dallas likes to play with at home, of course, pretty slow. The last two meetings between these teams have averaged just 208. Uh, And Luka and Trey both have struggled in the high-profile matchup, if you want. I don't necessarily expect that to continue at all, but that's that's really besides the point. It's just the the supporting cast, the margins you need to have an, an offensive outburst from Dallas Uh, is a lot of threes and that just hasn't been the case lately against Atlanta or I don't think it'll be the case based on how Atlanta's playing defense right now Clint Capella coming back tonight helps their defense big time and while Dallas has a good offensive rating recently at home you look at some of these hard-nosed Eastern Conference teams they played a 97 rating against Boston 102 against Cleveland 109 against Milwaukee uh, and they've only scored 98 points per game these last two against Atlanta. So under either way, I think one of these teams will struggle. I do think Dallas wins, though. Um, so I would actually feel pretty good about a parlay, either spread or money line with the under uh, and Dallas to win. Uh, or you might want to look at another game this on the slate and just parlay one of those results. 
Yeah, which I know we were talking about a little bit in that uh, Memphis video. Yeah, I mean, for, for this one, uh, starting with Atlanta's, you know, being a little bit better as of late. I, I mean, I'm not going to trust them. I'm, I'm sure. I'm not sure. You know, the last couple of seasons, they've had random eight game win streaks where they start rattling off some W's. And, you know, they're in the midst of, of a pretty good stretch right now. As, as you mentioned, they won four of their last five. Three of those were on the road. The three on the road where they had all those efficiencies and stuff like, you know, you already kind of pre- pre- set me up to say they beat Indiana with no Halliburton, Toronto, um, who's been better on offense as of late uh, in the last like four games or so, scoring over 125. Um, and then the Clippers, who we know are awful on offense. Um, all of those offenses suck, really. Um, and even really you know in their last uh roughly seven games where they've gone under uh in five of those there's been some pretty high totals but that's what we have today which i'm happy to say 233 and a half is very hard 232 and a half depending where you find it still very high um the offenses that they have been playing going under against uh are all you know basically the clippers the heat and the bucks are all on the bottom seven in terms of offensive efficiency then you got the pacers and the uh, lakers all in the middle of the pack in toronto as well um the sack game went under because uh even though sack is the best offense their third best offense in the league uh because even though it hit 237 it was still seven points under that 244 and a half total which is what we're seeing in those kangs game as you mentioned when you're reading those lines um yes their games are averaging about uh you know uh 238 on the road right now for the season are the Hawks um, where even in, in those uh, last seven games that I was just talking about, they're averaging 238, allowing the fourth most points in the paint, but Dallas is dead last in that. They allow the most fast break points. Dallas is also dead last in that. Uh, And then they have, like you said, even in the last roughly uh, for the entire season, actually, they have the sixth best uh, opponent three point percentage because they're just really, you know, sort of selling out there. They have Capella back, so they can sell out a little bit more. Their defensive rating is four points per 100 better when he's in, which is something that I think they've been missing as well they finally got him back last game and and that helped them win big time for sure um so i think you know even though they've gone over on the road their games are averaging pretty high on the road uh this is a situation where there's not going to be nearly as many points with the way that they defend what dallas does dallas doesn't get up and down um i'm really worried about the for for dallas to score i would be massively worried about them getting you know too many points without tim hardaway jr in the lineup um i know he's he's such a hit or miss player that you know it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world when he's not in he's not always the most helpful when he is in but when he is hitting um then you're you're in a much different place and obviously we know what dallas does when they win they hit a bunch more threes uh than when they lose because of the way that they need to win and when when tim hardaway jr has been off the floor uh in their last 15 games you know he's been on a hot streak and when he's on the court um they you know they're making about 11 threes a game when he's off the court um they're making about five threes a game so between he's he's basically the third most important uh, offensive right, player right now. Five threes a game. That must be, you mean per? No, no. F- five threes when he's on the court in the okay, game. Okay, okay. So when well, he during his know. minutes, which is thirty, you know, which is about thirty-eight minutes, or excuse me, uh, the basically the seventeen minutes that he's off the court during the game, they yeah. make five threes at that time. Uh, and when he's on the court for the roughly thirty-seven minutes that he's playing, they're making eleven threes during that time, right? Yeah. So basically, they're just their three pointers made and their three point percentage when he's on the floor skyrockets versus when he's off the floor, and he's playing about thirty-eight minutes. It's a game. So, you know, he, he's on there for, for a ton, and that's so crucial to what they do. Uh, the assists also go up when he's on the floor because of the fact that, you know, Luca's finally getting someone to finish the passes that he's making to them to get them wide open. Um, so I think he's just become way too important to what Dallas's offense is this season when you don't have guys like Kleba and Dorian Finney-Smith who have missed just so much time. Uh, even Dwight Powell, like, you're, you're, you're really looking for other guys to score outside of Luca, Spencer Dinwiddie, and, the, and, you know, the occasional really good uh, Christian Wood game. Tim Hardaway Jr. is just as important as Christian would right now and without him uh, I think this offense is going to be pretty stifled yeah that's a good point I mean Hardaway is kind of the anomaly the flamethrower off the bench that that can that can change things or when he starts whatever uh Wood I mean it's having more than just the occasional good game though he's been on quite a heater lately and both him and Bullock coming around offensively but that seems to have you know inspired them to play better defense and you look at what Dallas has done before those Portland games, you talk about the Clippers being a bad offense. Well, they held the Clippers to 101, still impressive even against a bad offense. And then we were all over the under against the Lakers, a team that you know was the last time the Hawks went over when, when they played the Lakers because of their pace. Uh, and then they still go under with the Lakers in double overtime. So I think if you really toss aside those Blazers games as just, as just a total anomaly for Dallas, uh, you say they're starting to play – the same type of defense we saw last year where they were top five defense, where they were 
incredible at home and played at the slowest pace in the NBA at home, um, driving unders. And they do get a little bit of a rest break here, and they're six and three to the under on two plus days off, uh, going under by six points per game. So, I, I, I mean, Atlanta also struggles down the stretch to score. We've talked about in a lot of games here, and if there are some new guys coming back like DFS and Capella, neither of those guys are like instant offense, like going to fit right in. Um, so I worry about that in terms of the chemistry, and I worry about both John Collins and Christian Wood going up against each other, like a little bit of cancellation, uh, that they're pretty good matchups. I, I don't think either of them is going to have a huge offensive game going against each other, and therefore uh, I don't think we're going to see a lot of uh, points back and forth. Yeah, so- solid matchup for the under. Uh, do like Dallas to, to potentially pull it out, but even like I've been saying, the, the lack of Tim Hardaway Jr. scares me and what I think that they can do on offense. Um, still, two and a half is a pretty small spread. We'll see if Atlanta can continue any kind of uh, you know efficiency on defense at home, but either way, I don't think they're going to need it quite as much with the slow, slow pace that I think we can expect in this one. So that is all the time we have for you. Make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along with us so you can check out what we have the rest of this week. And until we see you next, happy betting. Let's go, let's go.